the French burned way fewer cars on New Year's Eve this year, and fish rained down from the sky onto a Texas town, and a bloodthirsty psycho squirrel goes on a two-day rampage. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. This is Jonesy, your host. I'm grateful that you joined me. The first episode of the new year. Let's do it. The French burn fewer cars on New Year's Eve this year. Hundreds of empty cars that usually go up in flames. Parked cars, that is. They don't light cars on fire that are moving. They light parked cars in France each New Year's Eve. I had no idea they did this. Strange way to celebrate New Year's. Is it because of the cold weather trying to keep warm? Or maybe because they can't afford fireworks? What's going on over there? I'm from Boston. I... I empathize with lighting cars on fire. We lit everything on fire when we won the World Series, if you don't recall. That's uh, in 2004. We flipped cars. We just knocked down, like, light posts and (laughs) just out of control. What is it about you just want to light something on fire and destroy everything in sight when you're happy? Uh, No, I don't think that's normal behavior. I think it's happiness, uh, like, combined with copious amounts of alcohol. Is what's going on. This is France. You don't think they're drinking? Of course they are. Apparently, cars every New Year are set afire by young partygoers. This is a much lamented tradition uh, that apparently was in decline this year because only 874 vehicles were burned on New Year's Eve in France this year. My goodness, it's just terrible. 874, that's really not enough. We want 10,000 vehicles. (laughs) This is a ton of vehicles, 874. I think we might have burned like 10 when we won the World Series. 874, this is... <laughs> is it anybody's vehicle goes? It's like a it's like a night of vehicle burned roulette where you just wake up in the morning, fingers crossed, I hope my vehicle wasn't burned this year. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, it says here the number of cars burned has declined. They compare it to New Year's Eve 2019. Over a 1,000 vehicles went up in flames. 1,316, to be exact, pre-pandemic. These are apparently very exact numbers kept by the Interior Minister, Gerald Darmanin. There's a position for this in France. I'm the Minister of Car Burning on New Year's. I I work two days a year. Just me and my calculator as I add up the the vehicles. Minister Gerald says that there were far fewer arson attacks on the vehicles this year overall because of massive police presence on the streets this New Year's, enforcing law and order and restrictions on public gatherings, and of course wearing face masks as the infections driven by the fast-spreading Omicron variant surge have created a situation where you need more law and order in your public. Uh, Every New Year's Eve, wherever I've lived, there's been increased law and order especially when I was in New York City that decade. You go to Times Square, it's just police everywhere because they know people are going to burn stuff and toss over trash cans and all those other things, throw up on the sidewalk. Who knows what they're going to do? In Florida, they yank a gator out of the swamp and dry hump it right in the town square. You know how they do it in Florida. It says here, there is no information on the number of burned cars last year because of the nationwide lockdown during the coronavirus pandemic. So they weren't even allowed to go out into the Times Square and burn the cars. <laughs> it just still seems like such a strange way to celebrate. I, I like it, though. It's weird. Okay, France, I see what you're doing. Okay. I would have thought you had done something, did something else, but, I mean, it's just this shows how boisterous you can be. It says here, like many countries, France sees cars set on fire during the year for many reasons, including gangs hiding clues of their crimes and people making false insurance claims. But car car torching, as they call it, took a new step in France when it became a way to mark the arrival of the new year. The practice began in earnest among youths, often in poor neighborhoods, in the 1990s in the region around Strasbourg in eastern France. Wow. In case you guys want the... uh, car burning on New Year's history in France. It says here, it also became a voice of protest during the fiery unrest by despairing youths from housing projects that swept France in the fall of 2005. At the time, police counted 8,810 vehicles burned in less than three weeks. Wow, everybody's car just went up in that area. (laughs) Oh, man. 
And they all went back to riding horses. Oh, this is uh, astonishing to me, this celebratory car arson activity in France. They just celebrate everything with a car burning. Very, very weird. How does your birthday go down in France? Hey, happy birthday, Jonesy. We just lit your Honda on fire. <laughs> An unusual phenomenon in Texas as fish rain down from the sky. It's raining fish. It's raining fish. Hallelujah. Officials in Texarkana, Texas, say residents weren't just imagining it when they looked out their windows during a rainstorm. And it wasn't just the water droplets falling during a storm. It was fish as well. Just fish coming down. <laughs> Rain fish last week. Unbelievable. I've heard of raining frogs. I haven't heard of raining fish. Apparently this happens. Animal rain apparently is a phenomenon that occurs when small water animals such as frogs, crabs, and small fish are swept up in water spouts or drafts that occur on the surface of the earth. They are then rained down at the same time as the rain. Apparently this is scientific. I I mean, I really find it hard to believe that this is what's going on. How do you sweep up these these small water animals in drafts? I mean, how strong does the draft have to be? If you were like, no, this is a tornado that's doing this, not a rainstorm. This makes no sense to me. How? I think we need more investigation into this. I think something else is going on here. Someone's playing a trick on the residents of Texarkana. <laughs> I don't know who would, how would you you'd play a trick to make... Thousands of fish fall from the sky, but I don't trust this theory. I mean, I, I, look, at I've, I've been alive for a while. I think I know weather when I see it. Never have I seen animals falling from the sky. This doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Flightless creatures. Creatures. Flightless creatures can travel for miles in a cloud after getting swept up. I don't believe that. How? How do you stay up in a cloud like that? Come on. Some of these fish weigh a pound, I'd imagine. You can't you stay up in a cloud like that. Eventually, the cloud releases water, showering the animals caught up by the water spout or the draft to the ground as well. So they're swept up in a water spout, whatever the hell that is. And then the cloud holds fish? Like a, a fluffy cloud holds all, all the fish. Come on, man. I don't think that's what's going on at all. I think it's aliens, man. It's clearly... <laughs> it says that even though the weather, even, the weather event lasted only a few minutes, hundreds of residents... Posted about their experiences with this animal rain. Many of them shared the photos of the fish that fell on their properties. Man. My goodness. They, they got some guy named James who works at a car deal, dealership. He and his co-workers saw fish hitting the ground after hearing a loud crack of thunder. So Here's a quote from him. Well, there was a loud crack of thunder. And when we opened up the door, I look outside. You know, look, at it, it's raining real hard, raining. You know, we, we heard the thunder. We know it's raining. But then I see some fish hit the ground. I was like, hey, man, it's raining fish over here. Fish are dropping here and they're dropping everywhere, man. What in the heck? <laughs> that was an exact impression of James, if you guys know him at the car dealership. Um, I defy you to do a better impression of James than that. Uh, it says here the fish only measured four to five inches and looked to be young white bass. So they even only pick up one specific fish. But about, I'm supposed to believe that not only do they sweep these fish up into a cloud, hold them up there for a while, and then crack a lightning boom, shoot them back down. I'm also supposed to believe that it, they only grabbed one species of fish. <laughs> How? My man, they got other stories about this. In California in 2017, fish rained from the sky over an elementary school, uh, causing students to be hit with fish as they played outside at recess. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. Start beating them each other with fish. And then in Siberia in 2005, thousands of frogs rained down on a small town called Odzaki. Odzaki? Due to strong winds carrying them during a storm. I've heard of the frogs falling down. I even saw it in a movie once. Uh, in Texarkana, the site of this recent bass rain, locals aren't eager to see or smell the raining fish again. With the city employing residents, please, for the sake of everyone, let's let's tiptoe into 2022 as quietly as possible. Yay! You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. 
too difficult? No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A psycho squirrel goes on a 48-hour rampage terrorizing a town in the UK. The squirrel went completely nuts and residents were left reeling after the crazy gray squirrel went on a rampage in Buckley, Wales. This gray squirrel injured a staggering 18 people in two days. (laughs) 18? Oh my goodness. Anybody die? Let's find out some more information. Someone named Nicola, who's a resident of Buckley, wrote on social media, Warning! Vicious squirrel is attacking in the area! He has bitten me! He has attacked my friend and multiple other people! A woman chimed in, It's also attacked my two Bengal cats! Dare not go out of my house as it's lurking out there still, this squirrel! My cats fear nothing, but they're afraid! It's attacking everybody in sight, even the animals! (laughs) With its big, nasty teeth! (laughs) Its nasty, nasty teeth! So, doing a Monty Python reference, anybody? (laughs) Another bite recipient named Sherry Davidson told the media that she was taking out the recycling when the psycho squirrel jumped, jumped out at her from behind the bins and chomped on her hand. There's a photo of her with a bloody thumb. (laughs) <laughs> All wrapped up. <laughs> this really happened. Yeah, she uploaded the pictures of her bloody finger to the Facebook group. <laughs> Here's a quote from her. I've got teeth marks on the top and bottom of my finger. It proper latched on and I had to shake it off. He's taken the top layer off me knuckle. His teeth are like pins. <laughs> Leave it up to people in the UK to use words like proper latched on. He proper latched on. Who talks like that? You all talk like a Dickens novel. Ridiculous. You know, you could, I mean, (laughs) props to you. You got a bigger vocabulary than the people in the U.S., that's for sure. But you can't say these words here. No one would even know what you're talking about. They just, if you said it latched, even the word latched on, it latched. They'd be like, huh? What are you talking about? Yeah, we're all dumb here. That's what I'm trying to say. This nutty critter. Oh, phrases like that are great. This nutty critter. Dude, this nutty little critter. (laughs) Has been dubbed striped after the evil character from gremlins do you guys remember that that gremlin with the mohawk with the stripe down its head yeah. apparently the squirrel doesn't discriminate in the attacks it lashes out at the elderly at the children and pets alike biting them everywhere from the heads to the legs nowhere is safe as this critter would launch at people in gardens and even chase them down the road many victims have received tetanus shots after getting savaged by this Mangy critter. Here's a quote from Scott, who was ambushed by this psychotic tree hopper while smoking on his patio. Well, after arriving at the hospital, I had to, sh- had to have my tetanus jab because the squirrel broke my skin. I know of someone else, too, who had to have a tetanus jab because theirs didn't stop bleeding. <laughs> During the course of its two-day biting spree, this bloodthirsty beast reportedly injured 18 people with a staggering 21 attacked (laughs) in three days. (laughs) Well, salvation, finally. Someone trapped this hairy hellion, somebody named Corinne Reynolds. She's 65 years old. She's known locally as the bird lady. Wow, this story's incredible. Introduce the bird lady. She's a mother of seven. She'd been feeding the squirrel since the summer. Oh, what were you feeding it, Corinne? Huh? Bath salts? You've been giving it a dose of Florida, haven't you? It's attacking everybody. Uh, now, it says here that Corinne decided to act after getting bit on the hand herself by the same squirrel and seeing all the Facebook posts about the residents getting bit as well. Here's a quote from her. Well, to be honest, he was giving me calls for concern with his unusual behavior. I was wondering if something... Something was going on inside his head, like perhaps a tumor. 
I love, I love how she's got so much time on her hands. She can just sit around and ruminate as to the possible reason behind the squirrel attack. Maybe, maybe he's got some sort of tumor. He went through a bad breakup. That happens sometimes, you know. Perhaps the Omicron is just really stressing him out. He lost his job. Maybe he's a delivery person and it's just not as much work for him. Perhaps he's an out-of-work stand-up comedian as all the entertainment seems to be going away around these parts. <laughs> So, apparently, this lady, Reynolds, snared the squirrel by putting out a cage in her garden filled with peanuts, which apparently is Stripe's favorite snack. She then handed over the squirrel to the RSPCA, who euthanized the critter, as it's illegal to release them into the wild in the UK anyway. Reynolds had mixed emotions about the death of the squirrel that she apparently had an affinity for, um, but was relieved that she was able to protect her loved ones from the bloodthirsty critter, she said. She said she's, quote... I'm very sad because I'm an animal lover, as everyone knows. And because of me, the squirrel has lost its life, it seems. I know people don't like gray squirrels in general, but they're all God's creatures to me. All God's creatures. Now, let's end on a fun fact. Did you know that gray squirrels are an invasive species first introduced to the UK from North America? Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, we we gave you these tree rats. This happened in the 1870s. It was... Uh, says here that the squirrel was brought over to enhance the aesthetics of upper crust estates. <laughs> here you guys go. <laughs> enhance your estate. Ooh, you know what this estate would need? Some little furry things that bite your ass. They continued to be introduced until the 30s when the government finally recognized the environmental havoc they caused and banned people from releasing these problem animals into the wild. And finally they were like, oh, enough of this. Uh, did we also bring you... Do you guys have seagulls? Is that because of us? What about the Norway rat? Do you have that? That thing is ubiquitous. Yeah, ubiquitous. Take that, UK. I know big words, too. I got weird news for 2020. Drop it. Just spit all over myself. It's worth it, though. Happy 2022, everybody. Did you have a lovely weekend? Did you Did you get lit? As they say, getting lit, guys. Remember? Talking about getting lit. I <laughs> hope you got lit. I didn't get that lit, I'm going to be honest with you. I kept it uh, pretty tame. Pretty tame. I'm not going to say I did not eat mushrooms. <laughs> hey, hey, what? I'm talking about um, on my pizza, guys. I like mushrooms. I do. I do actually love mushrooms on my pizza. Not a popular pizza topping. Um, maybe one day we'll get into the pineapple discussion, but, um, I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to ruffle any feathers with that. So I'm not going to mention it. Uh, I hope you had a nice new year. Some of you reached out to me over new year's, wish me a happy new year's. And I thank you for that. That made me very pleased. Very nice to hear from friends and, um, loyal listeners of the show. I also got some new patrons over the weekend, which are, they're, they're doing it right for the new year. They're like, you know what? This new year, I'm going to make a change. For once in my life I'm gonna support my favorite podcast I'm gonna do it right And you're supporting your favorite podcast Maybe it's not your favorite But maybe it's up there You know, uh, People like Mark Corrigan Join the Patreon Thank you Mark Corrigan I don't know where you're from I'm gonna find out I'm gonna put you on my closet wall Mark Corrigan Happy New Year to Mark Corrigan And his whole family And everybody he knows in life Also we got Jeff Coleman Oh Jeff Coleman in- Increased his pledge so I'm very grateful for Jeff Coleman as well. It's super cool when you increase your pledge. That just shows major dedication and love for the for this, um, this podcast that I record in a closet. I'm just amazed that anybody listens to it at all, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, we, got, we got Michael Thompson also joined the Patreon. New, new patron, Michael Thompson. Happy New Year to you, Michael Thompson, and everybody you know. So grateful that you joined the Patreon. Please, guys, I'm talking about Jeff. I'm talking about Michael. I'm talking about Mark. Enjoy the extra weird AF content that's in there. I put some stuff in there over the weekend. I like to just keep pumping it out with materials in there. Weird AF content. Why not? Just doing it. Just trying to keep you guys extra entertained. And uh, and also know that by joining the Patreon, you're getting into heaven. So that's pretty cool. This is your ticket to heaven. If you guys want to get into heaven, you know what to do. Go to patreon.com slash weirdafnews and support the show. Or go to weirdafnews.com. Hey, click on the banner, guys. It's, I got a banner over there. Yeah, I figured out how to make banners because I'm cool like that. 
Uh, somebody left me a review, by the way, on iTunes, and I was so, or also known as Apple Podcasts. I was so thrilled. Someone named Ann, A N N. Ann wrote uh, five stars, by the way, five stars. I'm always pleased with the five stars. Because as you guys know, I've gotten fewer than five stars in the past. So I like the five-star thing. Uh, major issue, Anne writes, which I thought was going to be a problem. Apparently, th- there is a problem, but it's good. Uh, Anne writes, I only have one thing to say about this podcast. I'm so, so disappointed that he does not do this podcast seven days a week. What a major disappointment. And then a smile, a, a laughing emoji. So <laughs> thank you, Anne, so much. I'm so grateful. Wherever you are, Anne, doesn't say where you live. But big shout out to Anne for taking the time to write a review of the podcast on Apple Podcasts. I, I so appreciate that. I get so few reviews that it just makes me smile. Uh, I appreciate the support. Very good review, by the way. And funny. You're a funny individual. Shout out to everybody who joined the Patreon. Shout out to Anne. And shout out to all of you for being here and spending whatever whatever day this is with me. Um, and I'm, I'm wishing you all a, a, a lovely, productive 2022 filled with, uh, I don't know, Joy, I guess. This is, that's like the default joy. Filled with many episodes of Weird AF News and many nights with God. <laughs> with God? Yeah, with God. What the hell? Honestly, I really love your podcast. Just a few minutes into it and it's cool. Really good work.